in this second tutorial of making the PCB. Uh, so next part we're going to do is we're going to wire up the uh, 555 timer. So that's the 555 timer here. Uh, might just move that label. In fact, if I put the, its own label on, I'm actually going to put a caption there and just turn right 555. That's better so I can see exactly what it is. Plonk that around the middle. Okay, so let's have a look at the pin. So the pin number one is the, uh, let's think about pin one. Pin one is going to ground. So where's that going to go? That wants to go through this way. As you can see, um, yeah, so that's going to go around to here. So we're going to wire that around there. So grab a track tool. Pin one, I'm just going to come out here a little bit, down to there, and that goes to ground. Okay, so that's pin one sorted. You can see the little green line trying to connect it up. Uh, pin, let's have a look at the next one. So pin eight is going to be the um, power. So that's going to run through the middle there because it wants to get, get over here to power here. So I'm going to bring the power from through underneath here. I might have to bring it a little bit further down. What I'm trying to do is not make sure I don't... Um, touch any of these and we we'll have to do a little jink down here that's that bend there and that's going to connect up to that one there okay so that's connecting pin eight so pin eight now has power the other one that's meant to have power as well is also pin four so i'm going to connect that just straight down there as well okay so pin four and pin eight have got power if you're wondering how i'm knowing just thinking about the circuit diagram so looking back at the circuit diagram you can see here pin four and eight do go to power there okay next thing that needs power is going to be all these resistors okay so let's have a quick look at that see if we can figure out where the power goes for those so the power is going to be for those resistors let's have a little look here okay so power uh, is telling me it can come through here and I can run that power all the way across here. So I'm going to connect all these ones together here. So I'm going to connect those resistors together like that. And then I'm going to run power um, from there up to there to power there. And then we use that power coming up through there and across there. Okay, so they've got power. The other end of the this capacitor here, you can see that's meant to connect to there, so that's nice and neat. You can just bring that across there. Right, where do the other end of these resistors go? So I'm going to look there. These need to just connect straight down the way. So just left click, left click, right click, lock these, bring these across. So obviously these are going to give us the different resistance uh, that's going to affect the, um, the kind of capacitance in terms of um, giving us different timings. Let's have a look at this last one. Uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. That's connecting to there. Um, I believe that's going to have to connect to there. Right, let's have a little look and see if we've got anything that's not connected. Okay. So in terms of what we've not got connected, these pins here. So that one's just connecting to there. So that's nice and easy. That one there goes straight up here. I might just do a little again, a little bit of a dog leg, a little twit, bit, bend and twist there. This one here needs to connect up around there. So I'm going to move that underneath the buzzer. So I'll just match that kind of pattern and that's going to connect to that pin there. Okay. The second pin, one, two, three, Right, pin one goes to the outside round there, pin two goes to there, pin Oh right, okay, hang on a second. Sorry, I think I've messed this up. That one goes to that one. Ah, right, okay. So this one here that pin here is meant to go to that one, so can I just move it across the way there? So that's pin, these two are going to go through the middle, so pin one and two go there, pin three connects to that one. So that's fine, that one there. Right, so I need to get another wire through the middle here. So I'm just going to connect on here and just see if I can bend these a little bit more. Uh, these little kind of green little dots here are called nodes, just so you know. 
Um, I can add more in as well if I want to. If I just go kind of right click on there, I can actually add a little, a little elbow in. Okay. And this one here needs to connect to that pin there. There we go. So on the switch. So this is the. This is there. I'm sort of trying to. I can just match that same bin there. Not quite the same, but that will give us the idea. Okay. Um, that's the thing to do, do. I think these are all meant to connect together. So I'm just going to plonk a connection across there like that. Just double check. Oh, this one here is meant to connect through there to there like that. And I'm just going through the diagram and just double checking that I've got everything where it should be. It looks like everything's connected up. Right, as I say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's actually see if it works. What I will do is I'm just going to make it a little bit neater. So if I click on this board here, I'm just going to bring that in. Now, obviously, in real life, when you're making one of these, you'd want to make it as small as you can. So I'm just going to try and pull some of these things in the way. Because obviously, that would be using copper. And obviously, environmentally and financially, you want to use as uh, little materials as we can get away with. Um, terms. Oh, I'm just trying to see if there's any way of tidying these labels up a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of these R numbers because it doesn't really matter whether that one I use the first resistor or whether I use the last resistor. Um, what have we got here? 100 NF. So that's going to be the capacitor. So that should be there. If I double click on it, it'll tell me that's the 220. So I'm going to move that. To there, so that's the first one. The second one should be the 560, which it is, which is going to be that one there. And the next one should be the 820. Can I find the 820 label? What's that saying? That's saying two minutes on it. Oh, right, so it's actually given me the the um, the, the number, the uh, the value of the resistor as well as the thingy bob. So I'm actually going to get, just going to get rid of those and put the 820 up there. I can have the 1 million right on that corner. So that's the 820 there. I'm just going to get rid of all these labels here. There we go. That's a bit clearer to see what's going on. Okay. So I've made that as, as small as I can. Let's bring that right in there. Move that down to there for a little space. Um... If I was making this in real life, what I would actually do is I'd also put little pads in these little pads here. Um, and what they are is used for just sort of anchorage. So once I've made this, I'd want to probably bolt it into a case. So I tend to just put them in the corners. I'd also probably want to put my name on there. So I could click there, find a little gap, a little space, and I'd put my name in there. Um, and it should be, as you see, back to front that's just the way it's kind of coming out there so you'd, you'd put that label in uh, just so you can see so obviously if you were making this you'd make lots and lots of them uh, and you know which one is yours sort of thing okay so that's how you put a name in that's how you put the labels in any flying leads as well if you were doing leds that were going to be sticking out of a board so your led here if you want to do those you would put pads in as well just so you can loop the the wire through strain relief okay let's see if this works so the way to test it is i'm going to go to the gallery i'm going to go down beyond the, the green components into the red components i need a power supply so i'm going to grab a power supply up here now it's asking me for six volts so let's have a look what are my options for six volts um let's try this one okay so this is um it says it's made of double a battery so it'd be um how many volts would well, that be? That'd be four, wouldn't it? Four, four batteries in there. Okay, because they're one and a half volts each. I'm just going to put the power in there and ground into there. Um, I've got the LEDs are on board. Do I need anything else? I don't think I do. Let's try pushing the play button and see what happens. You always get this warning. Uh, just say OK. So let's go to the real world view. So what do I want to do? I want to click it so that it gives me the smallest amount. So if I flick the switch on this one here, push the uh, play button, I'm going to push the reset button in, and I'm going to go to the current flow and see what's happening there. Ah, okay. Hopefully you can see what's that's happening here. Those in red is positive. You can see down here this is the little um, the key for the colours, and zero is in green.
So obviously there is no power. And I can see here this is because the switch is not the toggle switch. So I'll flick that switch. There we go, you can see. Now what should happen is the light goes on. I'm just gonna push the reset button. Okay. And you should see there's a timer there. So at the moment it's on 30 seconds. Um, I'm gonna wait, hopefully that should go. Uh, now let's have a look. Just trying to see where would the voltage be changing. There should be a color change happening as the uh, volts are changing. I can use this little probe here. And if I put that on to, now I think it's gonna be, is it in this pin here? I think it's gonna be this pin here. Pump that onto there. I should see if everything's, if something's happening. Um, but that's is that little graph, is that going up the way? So it's been going for 30 seconds. Do we think it's charging up the way? Because what obviously what should happen is, after uh, two minutes, so that would be, we've had 30 seconds, so two and a half minutes, that should get to a point uh, about six volts, at which point it actually uh, activates. I'm just going to double check. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second. Okay, sorry about that. So I've done a little bit of investigation, and it seems to be that we, according to the one that we've got as the, our working model, there's a resistor missing here. I don't know why. Uh, it's 120k. So I'm going to add that in. So if we go to um, to the gallery, all the way up to the top to resistors, and that's our resistor. 10.2 is the ones we use. I'm just going to add that. Just drag it in across here. Let's just parallel these ones. Okay. Now this one, to my double click on here, the value should be 120k. And that's how quick it looks. So this one here does not connect to there. This wire here goes around, this little track goes around there. And this one here runs up the middle to there and across there. Okay, and I'm just going to double check this one as well. This one, this track here, and this is the problem sometimes we get lots of labels. It doesn't join to that one, it joins the next one along. Now I'm not 100% sure that it's going to make a difference, but I'm just going to double check it, just change it. So that's going to connect to the 560. Okay. Just have a quick look through uh, the other details. So I'm just starting over here. So we've got the positive going to there. That's going up to there. That splits off to 330, 10K. That connects to the positive. Right, let's try again. So push play. You always get that warning. Don't worry about that warning. Uh -huh. That sounds better. Push the reset button. And now that should start counting up the way. So if I get the probe and let's put it on to, I think it's going to be this pin. Let's put on that pin there, see what it draws. Okay, so hopefully that pin that is now going up the way and in about two minutes that will go off and then it should be making a beep. Okay, so obviously to prove it works, we do a screenshot like that to actually show it working. Hopefully, if you give it a minute or so, that should be going up the way. I'm not sure there's, there's no way of actually getting a, a reading. I don't know if I can stop that and do it again. Will it give me an actual number? No, I can't really see on this graph whether it's actually going up or not, but it should take two minutes. It'll be quite slow, and it should get to about six volts, at which point the thing should go off. Okay, so we've got to this point. Well done. Screenshot that and put that in for the batch.